Hey guys, it's Abby. How's it going? It's a glorious autumnal morning today. The sun is shining with full force. It's very bright and very sunny, but it's so still and peaceful out here and I'm really just chuffed to be out here doing this review today. When I talk about review, what am I reviewing? Well, these are boots by High Tech. They are the V-Lite Helvellyn waterproof walking boots. Before I get started, why am I reviewing a high tech boot, I hear you ask? Well, normally I review kind of your high end stuff, your wrap, your mountain equipment, clues in the t-shirt, your Osprey. <laughs> but actually, high tech are a company I am fascinated by. Like I'm really enthusiastic about what they're doing. They are definitely up and coming. They're really moving up in the kind of, in the market. Um, but I really am quite passionate about their ethos, the things that they believe from uh, like their whole manufacturing process to where they source their materials from to how they reach their market. So I'm chuffed to be able to review their boot today. Um, let's get to it. As I said, this is the V-Lite Helvellyn walking boot. It is lightweight, it's waterproof, um, and it's available in men's and women's. It retails at 109 pounds and 99 pence. So quite pricey, but let's run through the features and I'll leave you to kind of come to a conclusion as to whether or not this is the right boot for you. This boot definitely is lightweight. I'm not sure actually about the weight, but um, for a lightweight boot or for a kind of a hill mountain walking boot, it certainly is lightweight. The main weight comes from the sole. Now the boot is sold as waterproof. I'm not actually sure what it's treated with. It's not Event, it's not Gore-Tex, um, but it is sold as waterproof. The leather, get this, the leather is Pittard's leather. What is Pittards, I hear you ask? Well, Pittards is actually a company that's like eight miles down the road that way from my house. My house is there. How awesome is that? <laughs> um, so Pittards is a company I'm very passionate about. I'm really using that word a lot today. Obviously, the sun is getting to me, but I really am passionate about that company. Um, Pittards leather is fairly sourced. It's actually traceable. Um, Berghaus also use Pittards leather, so that if that's any reassurance to you, then now you know that. But it's, it's reliable, it's, it's durable, and it's sourced within Europe. So you're kind of cutting your, your miles down um, that you know the lever is doing. So you're cutting down the kind of fuel mileage that this boot takes to produce, if that makes any sense. But anyway, Pittard is a company I'm really quite passionate and I really back. Um, as I say, it's waterproof, but I'm not sure what it's treated with. Now, a lot of leather boots have a seam here and here. If I come a little bit closer, hopefully it'll focus on the the boot for you there. So normally at the toe bit here, there's like seams there where the lever split, but as you can see, there's a continuous piece of lever on the front of the boot. Then it's split into a second piece and a third piece you've got there on the back. So not having the stitches there, like where you bending, normally I find that this bit here splits, but hopefully, I haven't had these boots for long enough, but hopefully because there's no seam there, they won't split and that'll kind of add to the waterproofing qualities of these boots. So get the focus back on me. Hello, my name is Abby. So that's to do with the waterproofing. The actual inside of the boot uses dry tech breathable membrane stuff. It's very cushioned, uh, very, very, very comfortable. You put it in and it's like a slipper. But the idea behind this breathable membrane is it's as your feet sweat with leather, your feet are going to sweat a little bit more than they would in a fabric boot. Uh, the breathability just helps remove the moisture from your feet. Now, I've worn this wet, these boots in some reasonably warm weather, but I haven't worn them over the summer, and I've decided I would not wear them over the summer, simply because I don't think the breathability is enough for the amount of moisture my feet produce. <laughs> a lovely conversation, you don't get this on many other videos. Um, so basically, my feet sweat a lot, and I don't feel that these boots remove the sweat at a kind of fast enough rate so I just get very wet socks or damp socks and you know if the temperature drops at night and um, you're not going to be able to dry those socks out and that's going to be quite uncomfortable um, but so these are going to be my winter boots my winter autumn boots hence why I'm reviewing them now and I'm quite comfortable wearing them in cooler weather where I'm not going to sweat as much so also on the inside I mentioned about the cushioning so you've got like seriously thick cushioning around the ankle here also on the tongue the tongue is gusseted so you've got these little pieces of fabric here between the actual boot and the the tongue and that just kind of helps keep debris out of your boot so as it comes in and you're kicking things around and jumping in puddles as you do um, it stops that actually accessing your feet which is ideal i like the cut of this boot now a lot of boots or you don't doesn't see it as much but in the past especially boots kind of had that higher ankle um i find that very uncomfortable so unless i'm in like european mountains or you know the scottish highlands and what i'm getting covered in spiders um then 
you know, you don't need some super serious ankle support. I feel that this provides enough ankle support uh, for your kind of your day walks and maybe your backpacking trips. Talking of backpacking, the sole is very squishy. It's very comfortable. Um, and the midsole is actually like, it takes the impact. It really cushions the impact. So what that means is if you're wearing a heavy load or you're, you're backpacking with a heavy load, then the boot is going to kind of soften the impact as you go down. So you're not going to get that wear and tear on your knee, on the cartilage. Um, and it's just going to aid you and your feet that little bit more when you're carrying, say, like a 25k, 30k pack. So that's kind of ideal. Let's go to the outsole. You see this yellow logo. Oh my gosh, another spider. This yellow logo is Vibram, if I come a little bit closer. Now Vibram is a very well-known company. You're seeing it coming up everywhere on all sorts of shoes, not just walking boots, but trail running boots as well. Um, trail running shoes as well, your trainers. Basically, it's minimum weight, so super lightweight, um, for maximum traction and also minimum wear. So <laughs> let's get it right. Minimum weight, minimum wear, maximum traction. So. Basically, super lightweight, very very durable, very grippy, um, but also it's not gonna it's not gonna wear out, and it's just very reliable. It's just gonna increase the lifespan of your boots considerably. Didn't explain that very well, but hopefully you got the gist of it. The eyelets on the boot are rustproof, so generally boot care, you know, clean your boots pretty much after every single time that you use them. It's really worth paying attention to keeping them clean, getting the mud out of the eyelets, just because it increases the lifespan of your boots. And obviously when you're paying like a hundred plus pounds, you want to, you want them to live for quite a long while. <laughs> um, so that's that with the, the eyelets. The laces are circular as opposed to flat. I know people have their preferences. Flat's quite grippy, so your laces hopefully won't come undone. Um, and really that is pretty much it for the boot, the actual boot. Now what I want to talk about is a little bit about the actual manufacturing. So I know that this is designed in Italy. It's actually engineered or manufactured in Europe. So again, that's cutting down your fuel mileage. And every single time you buy a high-tech product, a percentage of that price goes towards the National Trust. Now, if you're from America or another country that doesn't know what the National Trust is, the National Trust is basically the UK's, or one of the biggest UK conservation charities or organizations. So they own a huge amount of land across the UK um, and they use that land and the, the like archaeological places, the posh houses, they protect them, they conserve them so that future generations can enjoy them. So every time you buy a product from high tech, a percentage of that product's price will go towards uh, funding the National Trust, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Now another thing I wasn't aware of until I actually got these boots through the post, this little tag came on the boots. This is about anti-poaching, rhinos. And it says on the back that high tech fully support the anti-poaching campaign. Please help us fight. The world is facing an enormous threat. Rhinos are being killed in ever increasing numbers, predominantly for the horns. Over 1,200 were killed in South Africa in 2013. This must be stopped now. It just says about www.stoprhinopoaching.com. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. They won't make it without you. How cool is that? So that's just a little label that was on the boots when I got them through the post. Um, so just to conclude, because I kind of rattled on a lot there, but this is the V Light Hellvern and Walking Boot by High Tech. It's lightweight, it's durable, it's reliable. It's ideal for your kind of day walks to your multi-day backpacking in reasonably mountainous terrains. It's leather as opposed to fabric. It retails at £109.99. It's available in women's and men's on the High Tech website. Check it out. Thank you very much for watching guys. I really appreciate your time and for bearing with me today because I was kind of all over the place, but we got there. I hope you'll check this boot out. I hope you check High Tech out because they are definitely up and coming and I'm really excited to follow their progress. And I'll look forward to seeing you in future videos. Cheers guys, take care, bye.